In this WrestleTalk news, the latest on WWE's plans for Elimination Chamber, a former AEW personality throws shade at Cody Rhodes, and Luke's review of Raw. So subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! So, last night's episode of Raw saw a couple of major matches made official for WWE's two-night Hollywood extravaganza, with Rhea Ripley perhaps surprisingly challenging Charlotte Flair rather than Bianca Belair, while Cody chose Roman Reigns. Shocker. While Cody's mania opponent was, of course, going to have to be the only world champion in the company, the only world champion they've had for a long old while now, by officially announcing the match, it likely puts to bed the theory that the titles could be split up at some point before mania. But I know what you're all thinking, because I'm thinking it myself. And what does that mean about Sammy, WWE? What are you going to do with Sammy? Well, as reported yesterday, WWE's plan is for Sammy to get his one-on-one -on -one opportunity against Roman Reigns in Montreal at the the Elimination Chamber event. And despite the outcry from many for Zayn to get his mania moment up against the tyrannical tribal chief, it looks like WWE is sticking to their guns. Now, according to the Wrestling Reserve's Dave Meltzer, the Sami vs. Roman blow-off has actually been set in stone for the Chamber since as far back as October or November. So yeah, I guess there goes that dream. But at least we're getting the match in, in some fashion. At least we're having it. That's good. WWE's confidence in their Sami versus Roman plans has even led to them announcing that the event's marquee elimination chamber match will in fact not be for the company's top prize. Instead, seeing the US champ Austin Theory defend his title inside the sinister structure against five other men, three of whom qualified last night. Now again, according to Meltzer, the reasoning behind this is similar to the reason that the Bloodline closed the Royal Rumble instead of the event's namesake match. And that is that Reigns versus Zayn is so hot, it doesn't matter what else is on the show. From the way people reviewed the Royal Rumble, I think that is true. As for the US title chamber match with two spots left open, could a certain beast incarnate get involved in the fun? Well, according to Meltzer, while Brock is reportedly set to appear in Montreal, he is not set to be added into the chamber match at this point. With Cody now officially set to get his shot at the big one in just 60 days time, it's easy to forget that just over a year ago, both him and his wife Brandy were engaged in a pretty horrific feud with Dan Lambert, an American top team in AEW. Even with the injury, I'm pretty sure Cody isn't regretting his choices right now. Even with the injury. Ironically, however, according to Cody, it was Lambert who ended up playing a major role in his decision to go back to WWE, handing him a WWF title belt that his father Dusty had held back in 1977, which is pretty nice of him, yeah? Now, while this little gesture would suggest otherwise, it seems like Lambert isn't actually a massive fan of the American Nightmare after all. Because speaking on Sports Kida's Wrestle Binge, Lambert revealed he didn't care for Cody during his time in AEW and liked his wife Brandy even less. He said he played the politics game better than anybody in history and sucked up to Tony Khan man and got his way all the time. What the hell is a chief brand officer? What does that even mean other than to feed your ego? Ouch! But despite the harsh words, Lambert did at least give Cody some credit for being a student of the wrestling game and carrying a deep knowledge of the industry. But yeah, I guess those scathing promos that Lambert was cutting had more than just a, a little hint of realness to them. Despite Lambert not being much of a Cody fan, it's safe to say that Cody is generally quite a well-liked guy back at his former employer. See the social media reaction from many of his former colleagues following that Rumble win if you need an example. Amongst those that gave Cody a message of congrats was Ricky Starks. That's pretty unsurprising considering their well-documented friendship. Surprising, however, considering that Starks was actually there with Cody in person when he won the match. Oh yeah, Starks was caught behind enemy lines via some leaked CCTV footage back backstage at the Alamo Dome, something that Starks acknowledged via Twitter, hilariously stating, damn, they brought GTV back. I mean, at least Ricky feels safe to return to WWE after the whole Ryback thing. Hmm? And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, aka Who Needs Sammy when we've got Cody edition of Monday Night Raw in about five minutes. Coming out of the Royal Rumble over the weekend, all eyes were on one story and one story alone. Sami Zayn turning on the bloodline and the bloodline in turn turning on him. One of the most affecting and perfectly executed angles in the history of the pay-per-view and one that will go down in the history books as a contender 
the best of all time. It raised a few eyebrows in our live stream reactions we did on the Wrestle Talk podcast, with one ultra chatter noting, who could possibly care about Cody Rhodes challenging for Roman Reigns after seeing that? It was a good question and one that people had going into the event. Cody was the firm favourite to win the Royal Rumble and go on to face Reigns at Mania, despite wrestling fans booking themselves in circles to work out a way to get the main event of Mania to actually be Roman vs Sami. Though it looks like we're going to be getting that at Elimination Chamber, which was always the plan going back to report in October. And then the road to WrestleMania can officially begin as the American Nightmare goes on to face the Tribal Chief at the grandest stage of them all. So then the fan theories came out, including from yours truly, that Cody could face a Dave Batista backlash from fans who want to see their new Daniel Bryan in the form of Sami Zayn get his Mania moment and be the man to dethrone Reigns at Mania. Could this have led to fans turning on Cody Rhodes? But as it turns out, no one knows the WWE audience better than Triple H. He stuck to his plans and Cody won the Rumble and announced on Raw that the main event of WrestleMania will be him versus Roman for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. And this crowd lapped it up. If anything, Cody was the biggest star on this show, getting bigger reactions than the likes of Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, and even Edge. For a while now, I've bemoaned that Raw has been treated like the B-show of WWE, while the best storyline in all of wrestling was all happening on the blue brand, along with all of the other exciting stuff in the company like Bray Wyatt's return and Imperium. Raw felt like it was lacking something. It was lacking a purpose. It was lacking a star. And now we have that in the form of Cody Rhodes, who came out to open this show looking and feeling like a baby face in this company that could rival Roman Reigns in terms of actual credible star power. The crowd popped huge for his entrance and hung onto every word he said in his promo, talking about his journey to this point in his life from his humble beginnings in OVW at the age of 19. It was heartwarming and genuine and was interrupted by Judgment Day, which set up Cody versus Finn Balor for the main event, which was quite nice as there's lots of Bullet Club connections between the two, which Balor played up in his promo. Judgment Day were also attacked by Edge in a chaotic angle that was presented like it wasn't supposed to happen, which actually made it feel all the more awesome. The big through line of the night though was that Austin Theory will defend his United States Championship in the Elimination Chamber next month with a series of qualifying matches taking place tonight and next week to set up those challenges. The first of which will be Seth Rollins, who beat Jad Gable in a very good professional wrestling match that didn't get the love it deserved from this crowd. They worked together beautifully and Rollins won after reversing several other reversals into a pedigree. EO Sky beat Candice LeRae after several bits of interference from Damage Control, and Rhea Ripley came out to announce who she'll be facing at WrestleMania after winning her Rumble on Saturday. And it wasn't what anyone expected. There was a report from Fightful last week that all plans for the women's division were changed when Charlotte Flair came back and instantly won the SmackDown Women's Championship. That has been felt on SmackDown for sure, and now it's spread over into Raw. Huh. I'm a poet and I didn't even realize I was rhyming those words, but I did. Despite teasing Rhea vs Bianca Belair last year and building to it in the following weeks, Rhea Ripley announced she's challenging Charlotte Flair for her title at Mania and not Belair. It certainly a choice, and one that at least has storyline justification, as Ripley came up short against Flair at Lockdown Mania a couple of years back. But I think I would have rather Ripley go against the EST. Even on a surface level, it means that both Raw stars who won the Rumbles are challenging the biggest stars on SmackDown, which only highlights the gulf between the two brands. And it now means that Bel Air needs a challenger for Mania, which will be decided at Elimination Chamber. With the four of the final five that didn't win the Rumble, Raquel Rodriguez, Liv Morgan, Asuka and Nikki Cross, already qualifying and a fatal four-way of Piper Niven, Carmella, Mia Yim and Candice LeRae happening next week to determine entrant number five. The sixth member is still to be announced. This works on several levels and addresses my surface level Raw vs Smackdown comments I made a few moments ago. You could say I foreshadowed this. Both of the chamber matches are Raw based and one even has Smackdown women going for the Raw title. It's a way to balance the scales so it doesn't just feel that Smackdown is the A show even though it is and should be given that it's on the bigger network. 
work. It also means that Rumble results matter, and it gives some stakes to a match next week. And speaking of stakes, Johnny Gargano beat Baron Corbin in a match where Dexter Loomis chopped JBL's hat with a hatchet, and Bronson Reed squashed Dolph Ziggler to qualify for the chamber. Next week, there's two more qualifying matches with Angelo Dawkins versus Damian Priest and Montez Ford versus Elias. Street Prop is getting singles matches to go towards a singles title is very exciting. Austin Theory also continued his feud with Bobby Lashley by insulting MVP on the VIP lounge and moving out of the way of a Lashley spear so he hit his former Hurt Business partner. Theory also made more references to John Cena, so he's for sure facing him at Mania. Unless, of course, John Cena instead challenges Charlotte Flair. The Miz cut a promo to set up the return and debut of Raw's newest signing, Rick Boogs, who quickly beat Miz while he shouted about still being in his suit. This was fun. And speaking of jumping brands, it would seem that maximum male models are now on Raw, as Maxine Dupree set her sights on recruiting Otis to the group. Becky Lynch and Bailey had a great back and forth to set up a cage rematch for next week in Orlando, which is nice and poetic as their relationship began in that town. Becky also took out Dakota Kai and Io Sky to set up that they won't be able to interfere in next week's match. Adam Pearce made this all official and then started a new storyline with Chelsea Green, who was looking for five-star treatment despite lasting five seconds in the Rumble. Asuka looked awesome by scaring Carmella backstage, and they then announced a Bianca Belair segment that didn't actually happen. Not sure what happened there, but one would speculate it was cut for time, because clearly three hours is not enough time. And the main event saw Cody Rhodes beat Finn Balor in a good match that the crowd actually came alive for. Despite good wrestling across the show and big names doing promos, this crowd were basically dead all evening, seemingly just waiting for Cody to come back out. And it added a lot of heat to this match, which saw Edge and Beth Phoenix attack Judgment Day, allowing Cody to hit three crossroads for the win. Given Royal Rumble ending with the hottest angle in wrestling, you'd be forgiven for thinking this show was not a good follow-up. But that's all gonna happen on SmackDown. This episode was all about setting up plates to spin for the red brand heading into Mania. And it did it rather well. Too bad the crowd sucked, but that's not the talent's fault. This week's Raw is four out of five. And if you're wondering how I reacted to the closing angle of Royal Rumble, why not check out this video from our live reaction stream on the WrestleTalk podcast. And here's a clip. I apologize to Jay.